Welcome to another in our series of quick revision blasts. We take a market structure and ask some questions and have a go. It's, it's always good fun to see what you think and I'll take you through some of my answers. Let's look at the, uh, the petrol retail oligopoly and in particular the economics of sticky prices. It's often said, for example, in this kind of industry uh, that there are sticky prices in the retail market for fuel. Prices often go up very quickly at the four courts, but then take time to come down. Why is this? Well, economics does have something to say about it. To put a background, first of all, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrison's and Asda, they now account for the majority of actually of fuel sold in the UK. They've all taken quite a bit of extra market share over the years. Indeed, the emergence of the hypermarket fuel retailer is one of the many changes taking place, happening in the UK fuel retail sector. There are actually far fewer petrol forecourts than there once were. In fact, between 2020, uh, 2000 and 2021, there was a fall by over a third of the number of, of petrol forecourts, petrol and diesel. And clearly this is going to accelerate, isn't it, as the emergence of the Nix and the expansion of electric vehicles gathers momentum. Now, crucially, the Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, is currently investigating whether the price we pay for our petrol and our diesel in the UK, the prices we pay are too slow to fall when the wholesale fuel costs drop. There's a market, wholesale market for fuel, which the supermarkets buy in. Some critics claim that fuel prices are slower to come down than when they go up. And that is a form of market failure. Here's the, uh, the breakdown of the brand market share for motor fuel sold in the UK in 2022. Tesco is top. Then Shell, BP, those vertically integrated uh, companies, and Esso. But then, look, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, Asda, and uh, take the next three spots before Texaco comes in. So the supermarkets now have quite a significant slice of the market. OK, here's a, here's a chance for you to have a go at this. If you want to uh, have a go, I'll give you a minute to give me two reasons why supermarkets are likely to charge a, a lower price per litre for fuel than smaller independent operators. Have a go for a minute. Uh, if you want to fast forward, that's fine. I'll take you through my answers in a minute's time. Would you expect to pay a little less for your petrol and diesel if you went to a supermarket? What did we come up with here? Well, here are my two points. Hopefully, there's a bit of synergy between them uh, and your arguments. First of all, it comes of scale. Yes, supermarkets, big businesses, of course, they can buy fuel in bulk. They can achieve purchasing economies of scale. They go into the wholesale markets and buy uh, fuel in bulk. They get a lower price than the smaller independent operators. Uh, in technical terms, this means they use their monopsony power, really key concept, to better negotiate good prices in the wholesale markets. And of course, there is intense competition now between the supermarkets. Often they use the price of petrol as a little bit of a loss leading strategy. That doesn't necessarily mean they make a loss on the petrol they sell, but the profit margin on the, prof on the petrol and the diesel they sell is probably lower than Esso and Texaco uh, because they're basically trying to get custom. So if you, you, know, offer, you, you offer 5p off a litre of fuel, uh, if you have a receipt, having already shopped at the supermarket. So they're constantly trying to undercut each other's prices to attract customers. Now, interdependent pricing behaviour is a key feature of oligopoly. So what Tesco is doing or what Morrison's is doing, Sainsbury's and Asda may well follow. Here's the price of uh, diesel in the UK from 2017 to 2022. The reason why I've chosen this revision blast is look what happened to the price 
of diesel since the, the spring and summer of 2021 onwards, surging higher and higher up to nearly two pounds per litre. It's fallen back a little bit, but it hasn't fallen much. And this is the point, isn't it? That prices are easy to go up, but sticky on the way down. This is a tough question. Have a go for this for a minute. To what extent does the market structure of petrol retail in the UK increase the likelihood of prices staying high even when global oil prices are going down? Have a go. Sticky prices are a, um, a feature, uh, a characteristic of oligopoly. And one of the models you can use, you may have come across it in your A-level studies or IB studies, is the kinked demand curve model. Now, this model predicts sticky prices. Firms are reluctant to cut a price if they expect others to follow. So I reduce my petrol prices, others follow. That makes demand inelastic and you can lose revenue as well as profit, you can lose even revenue. And of course, the evaluation here is that um, uh, the price of petrol isn't just determined by uh, competition between firms. Other factors affect the price of, of oil, uh, of fuel. It could be, for example, the sterling exchange rate. If the pound weakens, that makes imported fuel more expensive. Even if the world price of fuel is going down, the exchange rate might have depreciated. And of course, the government imposes significant fuel duties they might have increased the fuel duty, which might keep prices higher for longer. The Kingdom Archive model uh, is a way of trying to show why prices might be sticky. And we have a separate video on the Kinked Demand Curve model on the YouTube channel. So just search for it. That's if you want a step-by-step -step walk through the Kinked Demand Curve. Essentially, let's take price P1 at the kink there of the demand curve. If you raise price, others are likely not to follow, hence demand is elastic and you lose revenue. If you lower price below that kink, where that yellow, big yellow dot is, other firms will follow if prices are cut. Demand becomes inelastic and therefore revenue may fall. And even if marginal cost goes down, if the cost of fuel goes down from MC1 to MC2, firms might be reluctant to reduce prices. So the King to Market model could, could show sticky prices. It's one of the predictions of the model that prices will be rigid or sticky even when there's a change in the marginal cost of supply. There we go, a quick revision blast on sticky prices in the UK retail fuel market. Thanks for joining in. Take care. See you soon.